the Green Beret who went on a one-man rampage, Roy Benavidez, The Vietnam War. Roy Benavidez's life had been rough as a child. Both his parents had died. He was bullied by his classmates because of his mixed Yakui Indian and Mexican heritage and had to leave school in eighth grade to help his family. At the age of 19, Benavidez joined the army, serving in the Korean War in the Texas Army National Guard. He married Hilaria Lala Coy Benavidez in 1959 and completed airborne training, becoming assigned to the 82nd Airborne Division. In 1966, Sergeant Roy Benavidez was in hospital after stepping on a landmine. Doctors said he would never walk again. He had been sent to Vietnam in 1965 as an advisor for the ARVN troops there. Benavidez was carrying out a classified operation alone to gather evidence that the North Vietnamese troops were posing as Viet Cong. While he was on patrol along a narrow trail disguised as a Viet Cong guerrilla, he stepped on a landmine. Sometime later, a squad of Marines came across Benavidez. They initially thought it was a booby trap, but were surprised when they flipped him over and discovered the man in Viet Cong pajamas was Hispanic and wearing U.S. Army dog tags. He was soon evacuated to the hospital. In hospital in the U.S. two months later, Benavidez had recovered and awoke. His memories came back to him. The doctor told him he would never walk again. His spine had been damaged and his brain had rattled in his skull. Nevertheless, Benavidez, sitting in his wheelchair, begged the doctors not to discharge him from the army. The army was his life. Determined, Benavidez got up from his bed night after night, dragging himself to the wall and putting weight on his legs. For weeks, he pushed through the pain, going further in distance than before, which surprised the doctors. Six months later, with his wife Lala's support, Roy Benavidez walked out of the hospital. He was promised only a desk job at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, but determined and exercising every day, he trained vigorously and qualified for the Special Forces, also known as the Green Berets. He would be assigned to Detachment B-56, 5th Special Forces Group Airborne, 1st Special Forces. Six Hours in Hell Now it was 1968. Staff Sergeant Roy Benavidez, now with a code name Tango Mike Mike, was back in Vietnam and was off duty attending church, but his mind was fixed on the panicking radio chatter from the front lines. In Loc Ninh, Vietnam, near the Cambodian border, a 12-man Special Forces reconnaissance team, which included his close friends, Sergeant First Class Leroy Wright, Staff Sergeant Lloyd Frenchy Mousseau, Specialist 4 Brian O'Connor, and nine Montagnard tribesmen who were part of the Civilian Irregular Defense Group Program, or CIDG, were surrounded by a battalion numbering 1,000 battle-hardened North Vietnamese soldiers. Everyone in the unit had been wounded or killed in earlier fighting, and three of the helicopters sent to rescue them had been unable to extract them due to heavy enemy fire. When the helicopters returned, they were riddled with bullets. One of them, the door gunner, Michael Craig, age 19, had been hit several times and died in Benavidez's arms. There was no way Benavidez was going to leave his friends out in the jungle. Benavidez jumped onto a returning helicopter that was going back in, volunteering so quickly that he didn't have time to get his M16, so was only armed with a bowie knife and medical supplies. Benavidez described it as going into autopilot. As he was approaching the extraction zone, Benavidez realized his fellow team members were too severely wounded to run the distance to the helicopter. There was so much enemy gunfire that the pilot, Larry McKibben, had to zigzag in an attempt to dodge it, but was nevertheless able to provide covering fire. Benavidez jumped out with a medical bag, ran through the jungle to the wounded men under heavy enemy fire, taking a shot to the leg, which he initially thought was a thorn bush. He found Mousseau first against a tree whose eyeball had been shot out and was hanging down his cheek, but was determined to keep shooting back. The CIDG were in a pool of blood and patched up as best they could. Benavidez dragged everyone into a defensible position to direct their fire at the enemy and provided morphine to the wounded. He then saw O'Connor and an interpreter CIDG who he motioned to to move over to him, but the gunfire started again and they took cover. Another round then hit Benavidez in his thigh. On adrenaline, he popped the green smoke for McKibben in the rescue helicopter to pick them up. While everyone who could move got into the chopper, he suppressed the tree line with an AK-47 he had picked up to cover O'Connor and the interpreter who crawled towards the helicopter. Now Benavidez was looking for the team leader, Sergeant First Class Leroy Wright, who had been killed and who also had intel on him that could not get into enemy hands. 
Benavidez found his body and proceeded to drag him to the chopper when he was shot again, this time in the stomach and hit in the back by shrapnel from a nearby grenade, knocking him out. When he awoke, Benavidez was forced to leave his dead friend's body. Disaster had also struck. The chopper had crashed to the ground from enemy fire. The pilot, McKibben, was dead. Five of the men on board, including Mousseau, survived the crash, as did O'Connor and the interpreter who didn't get into the helicopter. Benavidez pulled them out of the wreckage, dispensed morphine, set up a perimeter around the crash site, and called in heavy air support from the F-100s above, who trapped napalm on the enemy position. When the jets ran out of fuel and had to leave, the enemy machine gun fire started again. Benavidez gave O'Connor a third shot of morphine and took another bullet to the leg. Their position was surrounded by North Vietnamese soldiers. It looked hopeless. But a helicopter finally came to their rescue. Benavidez and the rescue team carried and dragged the wounded men onto the chopper, but the landing zone was still being fired upon by NVA troops, to the extent that two men were shot in the back as they crawled to it. Shrapnel wounds to his face from earlier caused Benavidez's vision to be blurred from the blood in his eyes. When he went to get Mousseau, an NVA soldier butted his rifle into Benavidez's head and jaw and slashed his arm with his bayonet. He shouted to O'Connor to shoot, but he was too drugged for morphine to react. Benavidez pulled out his bowie knife and stabbed the NVA soldier till he was dead. He then dragged Mousseau to the helicopter and killed two more NVA with an AK-47 who were out of the helicopter's side gunner's arc of fire. And then he made one more trip to get the interpreter and destroy any classified material with blood still obscuring his vision. Only then did he allow the others to pull him onto the helicopter, the last man to leave the battlefield. At this point, the round that had hit his stomach had exposed his intestines, which he was trying to hold in with his hands. The helicopter, badly shot up and with no instruments left, managed to take off. When they landed, the wounded were unloaded and examined one by one. It had turned out that Benavidez had even loaded three dead enemy soldiers into the helicopter in case they had classified materials. They were left to the side, as was Benavidez. He couldn't move or speak because of the broken jaw from the rifle butt. The blood over his eyes had glued them shut, and with 37 bayonet, bullet, and shrapnel wounds all over his body, he looked dead. The medics started placing him in a body bag and started zipping him up when a friend noticed him and said, That's Roy! That's Roy Benavidez! The doctor said there was nothing that could be done, but Benavidez mustered his last bit of energy and spat in the doctor's face, causing the doctor to say, I think he'll make it. He was flown to Japan for intensive surgery, then Brook Army Medical Center, Fort Sam Houston, where he stayed for almost a year. Roy Benavidez had survived six hours in hell and saved eight lives. Benavidez's commander had put him in for the Distinguished Service Cross because the process for awarding a Medal of Honor would take much longer, and he was unsure if Benavidez would live or die before he could have received it. Finally, on February 24, 1981, President Ronald Reagan would present Roy Benavidez the Medal of Honor. Reagan said, if the story of his heroism were a movie script, you would not believe it. Benavidez said of his actions, the real heroes are the ones who gave their lives for their country. I don't like to be called a hero. I just did what I was trained to do. Master Sergeant Roy Benavidez died on November 29, 1998 at the age of 63. Subscribe for more Vietnam War history videos. Hey, Simple History fans, if you're looking for a better way to support the channel and help us create more epic content, consider becoming a member on our channel. Becoming a member means that for just five bucks a month, you'll get these amazing perks. You'll be the first to see new episodes with early access. You can watch new episodes before anyone else with this perk. The Enlisted Badge, a custom icon that shows alongside your username in the comments section and in live chat. 
As a member, you'll become an influencer with member-only comments. You can communicate directly with us and help us pick the topics that we'll do next on Simple History. And remember, it's not mandatory to become a member. Our videos will continue to be uploaded as usual. Thank you for letting us feed your hunger for history.